<laughs> yeah, as many as can be. I, I figured two groups will do it if we get 27 people or 28 people per group. So come on in as much as, as many as you can, and then I'll tell you a little bit about it. This is Keck 1. This is Keck 1, that's right, yeah. Um, we can fit a few more in. Come on in. We'll squeeze as though as though we're in an elevator that's only going up and down once every 15 minutes and we don't want to wait for the next ride, okay? So a few more people can come in, I think. Can I push forward here a little bit next to yeah. Alex okay. to the video? Sure, a little bit. come on. Oh, okay. Let me get Great. Out of your way. We do not I'll move back. You go ah, there. okay. Yeah. I, I be, it's really a la H bar. Ah, okay. So, um, right now they must be doing some tests that require the telescope to be looking at the zenith. So it's pointing pretty much straight up right now. What you're seeing is the underbelly. I'm sorry, it's not pointing straight up. I, I had it. It's pointing close to the horizon. And what you see off to the upper right there, that's the secondary mirror. Okay? And the structure which holds the primary mirror is that spider web like cage to the right, to the left. I showed you a picture of it this morning so you'd know what to look for. So the telescope is stored horizontally. The that is, the tube is horizontal. The mirror right now is basically vertical. And it's, um, as such, it's not visible. But right over there, actually, I, I, have, I have a laser pointer, which I cleverly brought so I could point things out. Um, you can see a few of the segments in the vertical position. And there are those things right there. You see that? See where my laser is pointing? Not this glass right here, but beyond it. When, when people in the front row have had a chance to see, maybe we can clear out to the back. But that's a vertical segment right there. And there's some other ones there as well. Um, there's another one right there. I hesitate to shine my light right on it, because they might be doing some tests, although uh, it's coming in at a glancing angle, and so it'll, it'll bounce away at a glancing angle as well. But right now I'm hitting the glass. Right up there. You see, that's a segment up there. Mm -hmm. See that? Right, right up there. This, this honey, this structure here is what holds them all, and there are um, those mechanical gizmos behind them that adjust the tip and the tilt and so on. Um, we're always at the mercy of, of whatever it is they happen to be doing, and since we want nighttime operations to be reserved exclusively or almost exclusively for the actual science um, they try to do as much as possible during the day and um, there's really no way we can request them to move the telescope and stuff because that would interfere with what they're trying to do there and everyone operates on a tight time scale and a tight budget at night this telescope is worth about a dollar per second. That's what observing time is worth, because if you take the capital costs of the telescope and the maintenance cost amortized over 30 years or so, it ends up being a dollar a second. So, you know... Most of the most of the scientific gear kept at a two-day focus? Well, some is at the Cassegrain focus, some is at what's called the Naismith platform, which is, that's one of them right there, and they can store an instrument there. Or actually, maybe that's where the elevator comes out. I'm not exactly sure right now from our vantage point, but, but there, there are some instruments up on that platform at that level. They're permanently mounted. There's one on either side, 180 degrees apart. So the instruments that require a lot of stability, like the high-resolution spectrograph, which has a very stable wavelength scale, it's stored on one on the Naismith bat platform. Uh, the adaptive optics system, I believe, is stored on the Naismith platform. But some of the telescopes, like the spectrograph I usually use, is at the Cassegrain focus. So it's somewhere in that labyrinth of, you know, the thing that looks like a cage there. I honestly can't see it from here. The angle of the telescope is not optimal right now. That's just the way it goes. Alex, may I interrupt one second? Sure. Give you a heads up. We are about ready to initialize for about five, maybe ten minutes. 
so there will be some movement. Here. There will be in five or ten minute yes. minutes. Wonderful. Okay, That's so great news. And uh, the lasers have been turned off, and so the can. The lasers have been turned off, so we're taking advantage of that. We're squeaking this in. We have to do it anyway. And since your group is here, just let me know how much time you need, so I can filter the people through <laughs> in that amount of time. Okay, we well, were very grateful. There's a radio for you. And okay. We'll you one move. Great. Great. Thank you, okay. Sir. Thank you very much. Hey, I'm so, going to stop um, our tape so now that everyone and start it when the movement. telescope moves. And I don't know how